Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we do thank you for our Bible study today. Thank you for the joy of the Lord. And thank you because of your presence and power with us. We're asking, O oh Lord, as we come together for a good thing today, you'll enrich our lives with the knowledge of the truth in Jesus' name. And we pray that the power of knowledge, the power of the truth, the power of your revelation will be in our lives and work effectually in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, that both our members and leaders and workers and our invitees who are here today, young people and older people, none of us will go back home the same in Jesus' name. We open our hearts to your word and we pray, Lord, we write your word indelibly upon the tables of our hearts in Jesus' name. Empower and energize us with the entrance of your word that we may be the stronger as we look at your word, stronger in conviction, stronger in the strength of the Lord, stronger in the might and the spirit of the Lord. Be with us today and be glorified in our study and fellowship today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We come again to the study of the word of God today and we're in Revelation chapter 14. I'm reading to you from verse 6 all through to verse 13. Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is falling, is falling. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead on his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night to worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the lord from henceforth yea says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them as we go on in the study of the book of revelation if you've been following through with us and you'll be coming regularly you will know that this period now is a period of the great tribulation actually the church will not be on earth at this particular time of study and you will find that as we come to this uh, part of the book of Revelation, actually in the study, we're already in the middle of that great tribulation. In fact, we're even beyond the middle. It's like the great tribulation is now coming, almost coming to an end. But there are still some really serious, terrible things to take place. In the passage we'll read today, uh, we'll find something that may look strange to many, many people. Because we may not understand the connection of angels or the proclamation of the gospel. But today as we look at it from verse 6, it tells us in verse 6, it said, And I saw an other, another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And then it mentions those that dwell on the earth, every nation, every kindred, every tongue, and every people. Actually, as you look at the book of Revelation, angels feature much in the events revealed in the book of Revelation. From the first chapter to the last chapter of Revelation, angels are seen to be involved in the unfolding drama. In this section that is in this chapter 14, seven angels come forth to make great startling announcements to those people that will be on there during the time of the Great Tribulation. The first angel, you find that in verse 6, is a preacher proclaiming the everlasting gospel. 
the second angel you find that in verse 8 announces the fall of babylon babylon is falling is falling the third angel you find that in verse 9 he is the one announcing the eternal torment of all who worship the antichrist and take his mark the fourth angel you find that in verse 13 declares the blessedness of tribulation saints who die in the lord sealing their testimony with their blood then the next angel that is the fifth angel that's in verse 15 he announces the harvest of judgment on earth the sixth angel you'll find that in verse 17 you'll find it's announcing the great battle of Armageddon that is the great and the final day of the Lord and the seventh angel is supporting and corroborating what the sixth angel is saying is still on the battle of Armageddon the great and the final day of the Lord what you will notice is as you go through the scriptures and you see the appearance of the angels from the book of Genesis chapter 3 and then you go on to the book of Revelation all through this is one thing you'll find out holy angels always do what God wills and what God commands they do nothing else nothing else nothing more nothing less only the will of God do they do and we are to be like those angels if you look at Psalm 103 I'm reading to you from verse 20 there in Psalm 103 you're looking at verse 20 it says bless the Lord his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word that's what angels do and that's why as we pray that prayer father we chat in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven who are those doing the will of god in heaven those are the angels and they do the will of god only the will of god and those of us that live here on earth that's exactly what we're supposed to do we're supposed to be doing the will of god like angels do it in heaven as the world approaches its end an angel is seen flying in the midst of heaven that is through the sky having the everlasting gospel to preach to all that dwell upon the earth another angel also declares the glad tidings the babylon the mighty evil power in the world that power opposing god and opposing the truth that power is falling Babylon's power and oppressive program finally will come to an end then the eternal punishment of all sinners is declared and then all supporters of evil will be tormented forever and ever and then the saints of God the people of God the redeemed of the Lord those who are washed in the blood of the Lamb those who are saved and those who have been saved and separated from their sins and they come to live that righteous life by the grace of God and they're living victoriously over sin those saints of God are assured of eternal rest and blessedness it's so wonderful as you read it look at verse 12 it says here is the patience of the perseverance of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus who are those people the people that keep the commandments of God those are the saints and the people that are obedient and addicted and given and devoted to the faith of Jesus Christ those are the saints and then it says in verse 13 and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me write it down blessed are they blessed are the dead which die in the lord henceforth then he said yes certainly ye verily i say unto you says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them and that is what we're looking at today we're dividing the study to three parts number one the angelic declaration of unalterable scripture angelic declaration of unalterable scripture number two announced damnation of unrepentant sinners announced damnation of unrepentant sinners then number three had anticipated the light of uncompromising saints they anticipated the light of uncompromising since i come back to number one angelic declaration of unalterable scripture you come to revelation chapter 14 verse 6 and i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear god 
and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters let's stop there for the moment here we find an angel this uh, during the time of the great tribulation we find this angel flying across the skies and he has the everlasting gospel to preach this is a pledge from the Lord himself that the gospel will ultimately be preached to all that dwell upon the earth. God raises up witnesses when human lives are silent. I need to remind you again that this will be at the time of the great tribulation. The church would have gone. At the time in which you are living now, angels don't come to preach. You don't find angels, you know, in the bus, in the station, in the aeroplane or anywhere preaching the gospel. Why? Because the church is here because the witnesses are here because the soul winners are here because the people unto whom the gospel have been committed into their hands because we are here therefore angels are not available here now going to every city and going to every continent and going to every country and going to every every community and preaching the gospel but at that time the church would have gone and because the church would have gone we find this angel at the middle of the time of the great tribulation flying across the heavens across the heavens Heavenlies, across the mid here in the skies while preaching unto the people that dwell on the face of the earth the angel will preach this gospel and it will be the everlasting gospel you see that in verse 6 it refers to it as the everlasting gospel and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth why see the everlasting gospel because it remains unchanged it's the same every time and it's not supposed to be adulterated or altered by anyone at any time even by an angel and that is why the gospel is not liable to fluctuations like the opinions of men and then what's the content of what he was preaching he was saying that fear god and give glory to him and that's actually the effect of the gospel when people hear the gospel and people respond and yield to that gospel because the gospel has effect on the hearts of men and on the lives of people and the effect remains the same number one it makes people to fear god number two to reverence god number three to honor god number four to obey god number five to glorify god in pure worship number six to praise the lord number seven to exalt him as the only true God that's exactly what the angel was saying he's saying here is the gospel and when you receive that gospel it's going to have an impact a power an effect upon your life and then as you you wonder whether angels have ever got anything to do with the presentation of the word of God the proclamation of the word of God yes indeed they have from the time of the giving of the law if you look at hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 reading verses 2 and 3 for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him that is it says that uh, the word of god was proclaimed was spoken by angels in the olden days that is in the time of old in the old testament and that everyone that transgressed that proclamation declaration of the word of god declared by those angels will receive a just recompense of reward and he said if that is so how shall we escape because uh, jesus christ himself greater than the angels has presented the gospel unto us and the people that heard him they have presented the gospel to us if those that is that uh, didn't respond to the words of those angels if they did not escape judgment how shall we escape and still to show you further the connection of the angels with the proclamation of the word of god in the old testament in galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 reading from verse 19 wherefore then serveth the law it was added because of transgressions till the sea should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by 
angels in the hands of a mediator and you will see then that when god communicated his word to moses and uh, at the time of the law angels actually were involved in communicating that word unto moses the lawgiver called the mediator here in acts of the apostles chapter 7 acts chapter 7 reading from verse 37 acts chapter 7 reading verse 37 here again we're learning of you know the connection of the angels with the old testament law it says in verse 37 day says that moses which said unto the children of israel a prophet shall the lord your god raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the mount sinai the angel that spoke to him on the mount sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us go down to verse 53 who, re who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it is referring to the people of israel they received the law of god by the disposition intermediary of the angels and yet they have not obeyed and that's what hebrews is telling us that you will not escape the judgment of god and uh, uh, that means then uh, angels are not strangers actually uh, to the word of god there are times that the almighty god has seen free to give his word unto those angels as intermediaries and then they pass on to the people of old actually when jesus christ was born would you know that the angels actually declared the gospel if you look at matthew chapter 1 matthew chapter 1 reading from verse 20 and verse 21 matthew chapter 1 verse 20 verse 21 but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost and the angel didn't stop there the angel went ahead to declare what his ministry will be what his mission will be and what his message will be and what miracle he will perform in the hearts of men he tells us in verse 21 it says and she shall bring forth a son and i shall call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins that's the gospel right there the ministry of jesus the mission of jesus the miracle he performs in the hearts of men and the message he gives to transform people the gospel he shall save his people from their sins you remember that when jesus christ was born there was a host of angels from heaven and they were shouting glory to god and actually they spoke about the gospel about the salvation that jesus christ will bring that he has actually brought in luke chapter 2 reading from verse 8 luke chapter 2 reading from verse 8 and there were in the in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and lo the angel of the lord came upon them and the glory of the lord shone round about them and they, they were so afraid and the angel said unto them that's the message of the angel preaching the gospel to these shepherds fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior which is christ the lord and this shall be a sign unto you ye shall find the babe rat in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly there was a there was with the angel a, might, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men and you see then that these angels that's exactly what they were declaring they were declaring the uh, the fact that jesus christ is a savior and that's the good news and that's the gospel that's the glad tidings that jesus christ has come to save men i come back to revelation chapter 14 and look at verse 7 sin with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters 
here you find that he's talking about the angel was talking about the impact of the gospel the result of the gospel and when we receive the word of god it has a result in our lives you can't receive the word of god and remain the same your attitude towards god is going to change your disposition towards god is going to change and your reaction to the word of god is going to change when you actually receive the gospel and the angel was telling them believe the gospel receive the gospel accept the gospel let the gospel have an impact in your life and it is going to produce this effect you will fear god and you will give glory to him the creator of the heavens and the earth in ecclesiastes, ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 and 14 ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 and 14 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter you are following god here is the conclusion of the whole matter you believe the gospel here is the conclusion of the whole matter you have accepted the message of the good news and the message of the gospel christ came into the world to save and he has saved you and he has an effect in your life and is living his reason resurrected life through you here is the conclusion of the matter it says fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man and that's why the, the message preached by the angel is referred to as the everlasting gospel. It's been there in the Old Testament. It's been there in the time of Jesus and at the time of the apostles and now at the time of the great tribulation when the church has been taken away, the angel still announced here is the gospel and here is the conclusion of the whole effect of the gospel in your life. You fear God. You keep his commandments because that is the whole duty of man for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or it be evil, we will, whether it be evil. We'll come back to Revelation chapter 14. Now, another angel comes now. And here is the announcement of that angel. I'm reading to you from Revelation chapter 14 verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is falling is falling that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication now the, the angel here came to announce actually those who have been studying the scriptures would have known that uh, the people of god in the days of old they have been looking forward to this because isaiah announced it jeremiah announced it and they uh, all the minor prophets too they announced it that a time is coming when babylon the evil power and the sin is of the peak of the of the power of evil that it will fall eventually and they were seeing that the evil it was increasing the world and that uh, babylon had not fallen but now the angel came to announce and he said the hour of his judgment is come and babylon is falling if you look at isa chapter 21 isa chapter 21 reading to you there from verse 6 for thus as the lord said unto me go set a watchman let him declare what he seeth and he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels and he hacking diligently with much heed and he cried a lion my lord i stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime and i'm set in my ward whole nights and behold here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen and he answered and said Babylon is falling, is falling. And all the graven images of our gods, he has broken onto the ground. From the time that Isaiah wrote this, the Bible believers who believe the prophecies of the word of God, they have been wondering, where is the effect? And where is the fulfillment of the fall of Babylon? And now, that's the reason why the angel now announced for you believers who have been waiting for the time of the fulfillment of what you have read about in Isaiah chapter 21, that Babylon is falling, Babylon is falling it's happened now, the hour the time, the period of his judgment has now come, and then it says in verse 10, oh my threshing and my corn of my, and the corn of my floor that which have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you the body of Duma. He calleth unto me out of sea, watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? And the watchman said, the morning cometh also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire, ye return, come. 
he was telling them that the watchman has seen something and the watchman is saying babylon is going to fall that's the announcement you have heard over here in revelation chapter 14 i come back to revelation chapter 14 i'm looking at verse 6 now again and i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the face of the on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people i just want to remind you that at the present time angels cannot preach the gospel the church is still here while the church remains on earth angels will not come and preach the gospel this one you have read here is because the church is gone the rapture has taken place the great tribulation was dead will then be on earth and because the church will not be here who are the witnesses and the soul winners and the people the ambassadors of the lord jesus christ the, son, the servants of god because we will not be here that's why the angel will have to come and at this time now you need to understand every generation must be reached by the believers in that generation because uh, this generation many of them will die before this time that we're talking about because we'll be reading about all the calamities and all the thunders and all the earthquakes and all the uh, the water being poisoned and the sun becoming dark and the moon becoming dark and all the various things that will happen already we have read a lot many many people will have died before the coming of this angel that is the reason why at this time you and i have the responsibility of preaching the word of god you will not rely and sit back and say well okay i didn't know this before that an angel will come and actually present the gospel to the people no that's not this time now this time now you are the one to do it you are the one to preach the gospel ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 son of man i have made thee a watchman unto the house of israel that was the generation of ezekiel this is your own generation and an angel will not do the work of ezekiel in that generation and in this generation an angel will not do your work for you i have made you a watchman over unto the house of israel therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me when i say to the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at thine hand that's your work so winning telling your neighbors telling the people around you that they ought to be saved in mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 reading from verse 15 and verse 16 and he said unto them go go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature this is not for angels this is our generation this is our time and at this period of dispensation of grace at the time of the church it is a church it is a people of god those who have tasted of the grace of god of the goodness of god and they know about the salvation of the lord those are the people to preach the gospel and here is a commandment of the lord jesus christ our savior lord and master go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature it's not only for the overseers it's not only for the pastors it's not only for the leaders and the workers in the church yes it's for them but for every member of the church everyone that names the name of christ he has told the whole church to take the whole gospel to the whole world go ye into all the world preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned james chapter 4 verse 17 in james chapter 4 verse 17 here we're told of the guilt and the condemnation and the judgment of the people that know the gospel have the gospel receive the gospel and the gospel is working in your life and you know that your neighbor needs it and your friends need it and your relatives need it and your children need it and you're not giving it to them in james chapter 4 verse 17 therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is what Let's read it together. After two, one, two, go. Yeah. 
That means then as you, you have the gospel and, and you know the gospel and you know that Jesus is Savior and the greatest good you can do, the best thing you can do for your neighbor, those people that are not saved and they don't know what it means to be born again and to get to heaven, the greatest good you can do for them is to give them the gospel. And to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I pray God will deliver us from this terrible sin of uh, not preaching the gospel in Jesus' name. We are to preach the gospel. We will preach the gospel. Give me a good amen. amen. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep over the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Though they are slighting him, still is waiting, waiting for the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they repent and believe. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for thy labor, the Lord will provide back to the narrow way. Patiently win them. Tell the poor wandering sinner, his Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. I come to point number two announced damnation of unrepentant sinners. Announced damnation of unrepentant sinners i come to revelation chapter 14 reading from verse 9 in revelation chapter 14 verse 9 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and it shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth off forever and ever and they have no rest and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name again i'm reminding you that is the time of the great tribulation and we studied already in chapter 13 that at the time of the great tribulation the antichrist will appear that is the beast coming out of the sea and then the false prophet will appear that is the, the beast that is coming out of the earth and in union with the dragon they will force the people on earth that they should receive the mark of the beast and if anybody will refuse then he'll be tormented because it will punish him with force and with fear and with farming and with finance he'll not be able to have any money he'll not be able to buy anything either to be able to withdraw anything from the bank he must show his mark and once a person receives that mark that means he's doomed forever is damned forever is condemned forever he will not be able to live in the presence of god let me just remind you from revelation chapter 13 revelation chapter 13 reading from verse 11 and i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exercised all he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell or daring to worship the first beast so deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he make a fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which he had which he had which had the wound by a sword and did live and he had power to give life to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causes all both small and great and rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Six 
666. And if anybody receives that mark, and that's what the Lord is telling us in chapter 14, that means he's doomed and damned forever. That means he'll go to hell fire and he will not be able to fellowship with the people of God in heaven. But we need to understand the Lord of all those who worship the Antichrist through the great, uh, during the Great Tribulation is the same as that of all who refuse the Savior and those who serve Satan even now in this generation and in any other generation. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. God's wrath, God's anger, God's indignation will be poured out without mixture without mixture that is it will be punishment without any relief it will be indignation without any mercy there will be no mixture to it at all upon all the unrepentant sinners the punishment of all who neglect or reject god's salvation in christ will be intense and will be eternal and that's why in the passage we read in chapter 14 of revelation it says and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night that is there will be no respite there will be no interval in the severity of their torment i want you to think about that for a moment because here on earth rest comes to the suffering person uh, take a person in the prison for example in a cell even though he's in the prison there are nights he will be able to sleep although he may be sleeping on the hard ground yet he sleeps he takes some rest those who go to hell there is no there is no rest day or night the torment will be forever and ever and when people are afflicted today somebody says he's afflicted he's suffering sickness but in that affliction they're still able to close their eyes and rest or sleep for moments of time and while they're sleeping they forget they're sorrows there's nothing like that in hell there is no resting there is no sleeping and there is no relief from the pain no pain will not there's no pain that will endure here on earth that is so prolonged but sooner or later everything will cease but those who live and die without christ those who die without salvation and die without righteousness will suffer forever and ever without a moment's relief how sad how strange that anyone will persevere in sin and carelessly go into unmitigated unending sorrow and suffering throughout eternity and that's why the warning of the lord is coming to us and is saying if we're going to repent here is the time if we're going to escape the wrath of god this is the time now you see as we read in uh, verse 9 of that revelation chapter 14 it says and the third angel that followed them said with a loud voice if any man worship the beast or his image and receive the mark on his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god the wrath of god the anger of god the judgment of god let's follow through on that word the wrath of god in uh, romans chapter 1 Romans chapter 1, I'm reading to you from verse 18. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18, we're learning about the wrath of God and the people that will have that wrath of God upon their lives. Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it tells us, it says in chapter 1, verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness and the unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness the wrath of god is not only for the people of the of the time of the great tribulation all people in all generations those who refuse the salvation of god and those who hold the truth of god in unrighteousness they will suffer the judgment of god it tells us that as it goes on in verse 28 and it says even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit malignity whisperers backbiters haters of god despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable unmerciful who knowing the judgment of god that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them 
that he is the wrath of God, the judgment of God will be upon all people. All people that neglect the mercy of God. All people that neglect the salvation of God. And they continue in evil. In Romans chapter 2 verse 8 and verse 9. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness there will be indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the jew false and also of the gentile there we are told that there is no exception at all because god is no respect our persons that anyone that neglects salvation and is unrighteous there will be indignation and wrath and tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil it tells us in hebrews chapter 10 those who know the righteous standard of god the salvation of god and the goodness of god and all the sacrifice of jesus christ but all the same they refuse that salvation and they become adamant and hardened in their sin in hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 26 for if we sin willfully if we sin deliberately if we sin intentionally if we sin knowingly for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins for but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and for indignation which shall devour the adversaries he that despises moses lord died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of god and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace that is there are those who have even been saved before and they were sanctified before by the blood of the lamb but now they are backsliding to the point that they count the blood that sanctified them they count that blood an unholy thing and then they despise the holy spirit the spirit of grace for we know in verse 30 him that has said vengeance belongeth unto me i will recompense says the lord and again the lord shall judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god uh, that's the punishment of those who refuse to yield uh, sometimes when we talk about hellfire uh, there are some people that uh, they say no god is too much of love to uh, to punish anybody in hellfire forever but look at the words of jesus christ himself in mark chapter 9 verse 43 mark chapter 9 verse 43 here are the words of jesus christ and if thine hand offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched those are the words of jesus if it were not true he would not have uttered them he would not he wouldn't have spoken them and you know tender jesus loving jesus lowly jesus humble jesus meek jesus he wouldn't want to hurt anybody he wouldn't want to deceive anybody it is because he knows it to be true that's why he said it then he said in verse 44 where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched that's what he said the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever in verse 45 if thy foot offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life uh, to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched if somebody can listen to these words of jesus that there is hell fire and life is uncertain and death can come anytime and the rapture can take place anytime and leave the careless and the backsliding and the sinners and the unrepentant the impenitent leave them behind and people hear this and they still go without praying and they go away without thinking about their lives and they go away without repentance without seeking for the salvation of the lord it is something deadly wrong and then it says in verse 47 if then i offend thee pluck it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of god uh, with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire what it means is if somebody so dear to you like your eye will cause you to go into sin into sin into sin every time and the only way to avoid sinning is to cut him off is to separate from him do it 
It's better not to have him as a friend than have him as a friend and then he leads you to hell. If somebody as useful as your right hand causes you to sin and sin and sin and sin, cut him off, cut her off. It is better for you to enter into life, into eternal life, into heaven, than having a sin partner, a friend who is smiling every time, but is the keys of the dragon. It's a smile of a dragon wanting to drag you into hell. And if somebody is as useful as a right foot, and is causing you to sin every time, and you cannot avoid sin when you are in his presence, cut him off. Because it is better for you to enter into heaven without him than for both of you to get into hell. It says in verse 48, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. In Matthew chapter 25, the words of Jesus Christ again. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Uh, here are the words of Jesus Christ again as it tells us. Then shall, shall he say unto them on the left hand, on, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Nobody should have any problem with the fact that hell is prepared for the devil. And hell is prepared for the angels that follow the devil. But Jesus Christ also said that same hell prepared for the devil and his angels is also uh, for all the people that will be on the left hand side because they do not have the salvation of the Lord. In Revelation chapter 1, chapter 21, verse 8. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Again, we find uh, the revelation of the word of God, and his revelation of Jesus Christ signifies through an angel given unto John to give unto the churches. And here is the revelation, it says, the fearful shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. What does that mean? You ought to get saved. You ought to get restored. But you are afraid of what your sin partner will say. If you remain in that sin because of the sin partner, because of the fear of man, it's hellfire. You know you ought to make restitution. But your comrade is sin. Your partner is sin. He's saying if you make that restitution, you're going to get me to trouble. And if you make that restitution and you go ahead and reveal what we did together, I'm going to deal with you. And then you are afraid. You don't want them to deal with you. Because of that you remain in sin. The fearful shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. And then the unbelieving. I don't believe. Let them say. They talk about hell. I don't believe. And they talk about eternal punishment. I don't believe. They talk about the wrath of God. I don't believe. They talk about the fact that if you backslide, even though you were saved before, if you backslide and you die in that backsliding, you will perish. No, I don't believe. I believe that once you are saved, you are saved forever. The unbelieving, they will have their patch and they lick their bones with fire and brimstone. And then they are abominable. They are abominable. Check up in your Bible and you will find that women that dress like men are abominations unto the Lord. And you will find that those who commit immorality with their daughters, who commit immorality with their blood sisters, who commit immorality with uh, those who are not their wives, it's abomination before the Lord. And it says they shall have their part in the league that burns with fire and brimstone. The murderers, those who commit abortion, whether you do it for yourself or you do it for a teenage girl or you do it in the hospital or do it anywhere for anybody it says the murderers then the all mongers those are the you know those are the idolaters the, the adulterers and the fornicators and the sorcerers familiar spirit the people that deal with that they deal with things connected or related to a uh, witchcraft and then it says the idolaters the idol worshippers you are taking chief tasty title you go to church a gospel church a pentecostal church and all the same you're running after the chief tasty title and then you are doing sacrifices because I, be, I come from a royal family and they say that it's my turn and there's no way i can avoid it well that, that's what it says. The idolaters shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. And then it says, and how many liars? Tell me out loud. All liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. 
I, I need to talk about this because you see there are people that do not understand what line is all about and they think it's only when you you know open your mouth and you shout it out and you say something that you know to be a lie they think those that's, that's only the liars but i'm telling you it says all liars number one there are mute liars m-u-t-e mute liars those are silent liars you remember in genesis chapter 37 the brothers of uh, of joseph what did they do they killed a goat and then they put uh, the clothes inside and they soaked it in blood and then they didn't go by themselves they sent it to their father they said they see if this belongs to your son they didn't tell them lie outright it was mute it was quiet it was silent it was just in action and it says all liars mute liars number two mischievous liars and you remember in judges chapter four in judges chapter four what happened is that uh, you know uh, there was a battle there was a war and in this uh, battle this fellow fell that is sincere he felt that he, has, he had escaped the the jaws of death and then we're told in judges chapter four reading from verse 17 judges chapter four verse 17 it says how be it sincere fled away on his feet to the tent of jail the the wife of a uh, heban the canaanite for there was peace friendship fellowship between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heba the Canaanite and Jael went out to meet Sisera and uh, he saw him and he said turn in my lord turn in to me fear not and when he had turned in unto him unto her into the tent she covered him with a mantle and he said unto him give me I pray thee, a little water to drink and uh, for I am thirsty and she she opened a bottle of milk and gave him milk to drink and gave him drink and covered him would you think that anybody like this can deceive you would you think that anybody like this you are running from battle you are weary you are tired and you are worn out and then you come to the house and say i, I need water and he says i'll give you i'll give you more than water he gave him milk and when he gave him the when she gave him the milk the fellow slept in verse 20 it says again again he said unto her stand in the door of the tent and it shall be when any man does come and inquire of thee and say is there any man here thou shalt say no then jail heba's wife took a nail of the tent and took an hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground for he was fast asleep and weary so he died mischievous liars and they'll cover up their mischief they'll cover up with you know everything with deceit with lying sweet mouths and they'll spare fear words that will speak to you and yet they're deceivers number three murderous liars murderous liars that you'll find in first Kings chapter 21 from verse 5 to verse 14 i'll tell you the story um ahab asked for the vineyard of Naboth. and Naboth said i'm sorry it's uh, for my i got it from my forefathers i cannot do that it's my inheritance and then he became unhappy and sad and then turned his face to the world he would not eat and so jezebel said you are a king what's the matter with you why are you sad i wanted the vineyard of Naboth. he doesn't want to give it to me don't worry i'll give it to you and so jezebel wrote to the city where uh, Naboth was living he said uh, make a feast and as you make that feast, uh, you will say that when the people are rejoicing, celebrating, worshipping God, tell them that he blasphemed God, that you heard him. And then when you say that, stone him to death. And that is how they stoned the man neighbors to death was lie the lie of, Je of jezebel and there are murderous liars what their lies they murder people number four mystical liars they're influenced by evil spirit they're influenced by a familiar spirit and it's like the spirit influencing them it makes them you know forces them to tell the lie that you'll find in first kings chapter 22 from verse 19 to verse 23 and then number five money making liars that's gehazi uh, this man neman had come 
and Elisha had uh, uh, healed uh, this man, get into River Jordan, and then you'll be cleansed when you jump in there seven times. And he came eventually after some uh, resentment, he eventually agreed. And then he was cleansed. And then he said, Take this for me. And Elisha said, No, miracles are not for money, they're not for sale. You can go. I'm not going to take anything. And then eventually uh, Naaman went. And Gehazi said, What? My master allows this man to go like this and eventually run after him. What's the matter? My master has sent me to you. What happened? Some people just came now to visit us. We don't have anything to set before them. So my master said, what he refused is asking for it. Now can you give it to me? And then he got all those things, changes of raiment and money and silver and gold. And then he packed it somewhere. And Elisha said, where have you been? My servant went no whither. I've been here all the time. Did not my spirit follow you when that man turned and gave you the money? Now the leprosy of Naaman will come upon you. And it came upon him. Money making liars. The traders, the merchants, and the sellers, and the market men, and the market women. Money making to tell lies. You're looking for promotion. Lies. You, get, you want money. Lies. And because you want to take this and take that from people, you become a Gehazi. And you are a money-making liar. There are malicious liars. Malicious liars. In Esther chapter 3, you read it from verse 6 to verse 11. Read it when you get back home. Here is a Mordecai that was staying at the gate. And then Haman came. And Mordecai will not bend or bow because he said, I'm a Jew. And this a Haman be became so unhappy and sad what kind of insult is this disrespect this is terrible and then he said i'm not even going to touch me alone i'm going to kill all the people that are connected with him all the jews and then he went to king ahasuerus and he said there are some people in this community they, their law is diverse from the laws of everybody and they disobey your lord they disrespect you and they are actually injurious to this kingdom and if you will permit me because i'm trying to help you king of uh, so that we cleanse this uh, we cleanse this land and all these people that are a threat to the government of this good of you the good king let's get rid of them and even i will pay all the money that is necessary for the people that will exterminate them and then the king gave him a signal a trick a signature and say go ahead and go and do it it was all a lie malicious liars there are master liars number seven uh, those people they are practice lying to the point they have perfected the method of lying and they, they have taught themselves how to do it and they do it so cleverly you'll never be able to discover them in jeremiah chapter 9 let us read this one jeremiah chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 5 jeremiah chapter 9 verse 5 here he tells us and they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth they have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity they have taught themselves to tell lies they have trained themselves and they have schooled themselves in the art of telling lies and they do it so masterfully that you will not be able to di discover them number eight ministerial liars they say they are prophesying they say they are preaching they say they are proclaiming the mind of god to us and they'll be telling lies and they will tell lies and put negative for positive and put positive for negative in ezekiel chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 7 ezekiel chapter 13 and i'm reading to you from verse 7 ezekiel 13 7. it tells us have you not seen a vain vision and have ye not spoken a lying divination whereas ye say the lord says it i'll be it i have not spoken therefore thus says the lord god because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies therefore behold i'm against you says the lord in verse 22 because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad whom i have not made sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life ministerial liars number nine mandated liars you remember when jesus christ rose from the dead 
And then the security, the, the watches, they came and they told the authorities, they said, this Jesus, he actually rose from the dead. And then they mandated them to lie. And he said, here is what you will say. You will tell the people, the authorities, that his disciples came and stole his body away. And if you get into any trouble, we're going to deliver you from that trouble. We've mandated you, go and do it. Mandated liars. And you know what we're studying, you know what we're reading? It says, that in, that's in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. It says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the mongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn it with fire and brimstone which is the second death that means the mute liars the mischievous liars the murderous liars the mystical liars the money making liars and the malicious liars and the master liars masterful liars and the ministerial liars were the mandated liars all shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone i pray will not be part of them I pray the grace of God will hold us and restrain us and control us and the lies of the past after we have repented and made restitution God has forgiven us will begin to live a new life of faithfulness and sincerity and truthfulness in Jesus name. I come to point number three the anticipated delight of uncompromising sins anticipated delight of uncompromising sins revelation chapter 14 verses 12 and 13 revelation chapter 14 reading from verse 12 it tells us here in the word of god the delight of the people of god the joy of the children of god the people that die in the lord it says in verse 12 here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and of the and the face of jesus it's telling us that the people who keep the commandments of god those are the saints and the people that obey the lord jesus christ and they are committed and devoted and consecrated to the faith and to the reliance and dedication to the lord jesus christ those are the saints and there's something you find in their lives you'll find patience perseverance it tells us in the word of god that patience is very important in fact uh, in particular especially as we see the day approaching it tells us in your patience possess your souls in in Luke chapter 21 verse 19 Luke chapter 21 verse 19 in your patience possess ye your souls if you were to turn that around as we interpret it if you are impatient you're going to lose your soul because the impatient person is going to do things that will get him into spiritual trouble spiritual calamity and eventually the impatient person will do things that will make him miss his step and lose his way and cut off himself from relationship with the lord but when you are patient and you leave everything to the hands of the lord as the lord wills the lord is on the throne when is the time of the lord he'll do what he wants to do there's nothing i'm going to fight for it's impatience that make us to do unscriptural things on christian things on spiritual things and then we lose out spiritually but in your patience possess ye your souls in hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse uh, reading from verse 35 the lord wants us to be constant he wants us to be patient he wants us to keep on relying upon him so that we do not cast away the confidence of our faith in the lord it says cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of god ye might receive the promise you know there are people that are so much in a hurry after all i've done what they told me to do what are we waiting for again and they discipline me because i did wrong i accept but i told them i've repented i've told them that i'm all right now what are they waiting for again after ye have done the will of god you exercise patience that ye might receive the promise impatience can ruin your life for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry now the judge shall lay by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him it is impatience that make people to draw back uh, sometimes simple simple things I wanted to see the pastor i wanted to see the group coordinator i wanted to see the coordinator i've not been able to see them what are they doing and i'm here and this and that and because of that impatience they draw back they go away 
And when we feel that the church should have given us this privilege and this privilege, this is our right. We are part of the church. Why is this not be patient? And it is because of that impatience. Okay, if it's like that, I'm going to another place. Another place where you will not hear the truth of the word of God. Another place where they will be petting you and they will not tell you what's wrong with you. And another place where they will not tell you the soul that sin it shall die and without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Be patient. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But thank God we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. I said we are not of them that draw back to perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We come back to Revelation. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. And they that keep the commandments of God and of the face of Jesus. Uh, those people I told you already, those are the people that have heard the word of God. They accept the word of God. Even though the dragon might be after them, wanting to destroy them, wanting to hurt them. Yet, they remain firm and stay on the word of God in Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus and these are the people actually that have washed their robe in the blood of the lamb in Revelation chapter 7 reading from verse 14 Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 and I said unto him sir thou knowest and he said unto me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that seated on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more now neither thirst anymore neither shall the sun of the, the sun the sun light on them nor any heat the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the living fountains of waters and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes i pray that will be your lord that one of these days when the lord will come then you'll be with the people of god and you'll go away in the rapture in jesus name constancy in obeying and keeping the commandments of god and perseverance in the faith of jesus our lord and savior will be rewarded by god maintaining patience maintaining perseverance in the long continued persecutions and trials of the christian life shows that we truly belong to christ and we belong to god the blessedness of the future life for such people is certain didn't you hear what the bible declares they are blessed are the dead which die in the lord the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth yea says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them only those who die in the Lord are blessed as you check up in the Bible from cover to cover God has never pronounced the condition of sinners who die in their sin happy or blessed to those uh, those who die in the Lord what does that mean number one they have the evidence of genuine salvation Number two, at the point of death, they have the evidence of abiding in Christ. Number three, it says that they're going to be blessed. They're going to be happy. There's glory waiting for them. There's indescribable joy waiting for them. There are eternal rewards waiting for them. And eternal rest waiting for them. And then there'll be the greatest of all honors awaiting all those saints of God, all those saints in Christ in the future, in heaven. I pray that will be your Lord. And if that is going to be your lot, it means that at this time now, you ought to be serious for the, with the salvation of your soul. And you ought to be serious with the preservation of your salvation and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And you ought to be very serious in the service of the Lord as well. That you are totally committed your life to the Lord. And you are not playing with religion. You are not falling and rising, falling and rising. And you are also acting as if you don't know that eternity is real. It is only those who have been saved. Those who have been sanctified and those who remain holy and righteous before the lord to the point of death or to the point of the time of the rapture that you have this blessedness we're talking about in hebrews chapter 6 reading from verse 10 hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 for god is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love work and labor of love 
it's not just a work. If it's a work of hatred or the work of hypocrisy or the work of insincerity, it is no reward. It's a work of love and the labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end to the end to the end that's a secret the people that remain with the lord to the very end those are the people that will be rewarded eventually i pray that as you have given your life to the lord whatever trials whatever tribulation whatever trouble whatever temptation may come your way the lord will keep you faithful to the very end in jesus name if you have not been saved i i want to tell you that the most urgency you need nice to fall on your face before the lord and say lord i don't want to die a sinner i want to remain righteous i want to become righteous you repent of your sin and then you give your lives to the lord and if you have relatives that do not know the lord they're still they're going to church they're religious they don't know the lord it's your responsibility go and tell them go and tell them jesus died for sinful men go and tell them jesus is coming again rescue them before you it is too late for them and for those of us who are in the church you have children you have uh, relatives and neighbors who are bringing them to the church but they are not born again yet what if the trumpet sounds and what if the rapture takes place and you go and they have and your own children or your own wife or your own husband or your own relatives living with you and they have not been born again or maybe church members people you are rubbing shoulders with they have not given their lives to the lord how will you be able to face the lord in eternity this is the time if you are not saved get saved if you have been saved get sanctified if you are saved and sanctified be a soul winner and go and tell other people jesus is coming salvation is the urgent thing we need to seek and as they come to the lord the lord will save them and then by his grace he'll keep us faithful to the end let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer and say oh lord i don't want to face the great tribulation when the great tribulation will take place i want to be a real child of god and i want to go with the lord when he comes you have not been born again give your life to the lord and be born again and you have been you know falling and rising playing with sin you tell the lord oh lord i'm sorry oh lord i'm sorry i've been careless with my life i've been careless i've been playing religion or maybe you were born again some years ago you know how serious you were you know how fervent you were and you know how dedicated you were you know how saintly you were and you know how holy you are and you know how fear you fear sin and you know how you will not compromise your christian stand with anybody but of late how's your life has not carelessness come into your life has not sinning come back into your life as not joking a uh, uh, line was a uh, line was joking jesting as it not come back why don't you fall on your face before the lord and say lord i now want to come back to you all these are uh, playing with religion enough of it enough of it i don't know when the lord will come might be at the very brink of hell at the very gate of death and you're still joking and jesting and you're still playing with sin but this is the time to call upon the name of the lord and say lord i don't want to die in sin i don't want to die in sin i don't want to die in sin have mercy upon me lord have mercy upon me lord the soul that sinneth it shall die but the gift of god is life eternal it's life eternal talk to the lord in prayer talk to the lord in prayer and tell the lord i need to be saved i need to be born again and if you may say it, I about this thing in your heart, this Adamic nature, this stony heart. Why don't you tell the Lord, cut it off from me. Take the stony heart away from me. Lord, have mercy on me. Sanctify me. Make me pure. Make me holy. All these unholy thoughts, unholy attitude, cleanse me, wash me, purge me. Make me ready for the rapture. The Lord will